Uh, welcome everybody. And um, tonight's topic is on brain injury and concussion and how vision is connected. I've been practicing since 1992 with my husband, um, with Daniel and Davis Optometry. And as Diana mentioned, I am the immediate past president of uh, NORA, which is the Neuro Optometric Rehab Association. Um, I also work as a uh, clinical preceptor for fourth year optometry students who are wanting to learn more about uh, neurooptometric rehabilitation with two of the colleges, uh, one in Illinois and one in California. Um, I'm a consultant for the brain injury clinics at the local uh, hospitals of Tri-City Medical Center and Scripps Hospital. And I'm a consultant and provider of vision therapy services for all of San Diego school districts um, for children who have uh, neurological problems and developmental delays. So what is a concussion? Um, it's the most common uh, traumatic brain injury. It comes from the word concatere, which means to shake violently. And it's uh, from a direct uh, sudden hit to the head. Um, one of the common types of concussion is where um, in a whiplash situation uh, where they hit the front of their head, it jolts back and hits the back of their head. So they have two parts of the brain that are affected and it can cause some micro shearing of the axons of the, the uh, neurons that are in the brain. And so even if you have a um, uh, MRI or CAT scan of the brain, it may not show up as anything um, of any type of damage that is obvious on the imaging, but you can still have a lot of symptoms and, um, and problems. So what increases your risk for concussion? Um, children and adult, older adults are more susceptible um, to falls and that can increase the risk for concussion. Playing a contact sport or having a safety gear that is um, not worn or it's not adequate or having contact sports that aren't supervised by an adult. Um, being in a car, motorcycle, bicycle or other accident um, which can cause a blow to the head or being hit or struck um, from any type of physical abuse. And uh, in the military service, we uh, see a lot of blast injuries um, where they can hit their head on the front or the back of their head. And we're near Camp Pendleton, so we see a lot of our military personnel with concussions. And one of these last ones um, most people don't know about is that if you had a concussion in the past, you're more likely to have and more susceptible to getting a concussion in the future. And I'll talk um, as I go through the lecture a little bit about why that happens. So some of the symptoms of concussion are confusion, clumsiness, nausea and vomiting, difficulty with memory, headaches, irritability and difficulty concentrating, sleep disturbances, cervical pain, problems with taste or smell, uh, sensitivity to noise and ringing in the ears. And uh, very commonly uh, mental health issues such as anxiety and depression and unusual reactions to stimuli. And what I mean by that is that they may be hypo or hypersensitive to sound, taste, uh, smell, touch, and um, visual stimuli. And so they may be um, covering their ears uh, because sound is too much. The movement um, or being touched is, is uh, very uncomfortable, um, but it's more um, uh, exacerbated because of that a concussion. So some of the things that um, we look at and how they're related to those common concussion symptoms um, are what we see that are being affected visually. And uh, the first one is light sensitivity um, or what we call photophobia. And uh, it's very common because once you've mm -hmm. had a concussion, you can be in a state of fight or flight. Um, you're in shock, uh, your pupils dilate, your heart is racing, and you're like running from the bear because you're in a high anxiety situation. Um, when your pupils stay dilated though, then they don't constrict when presented with light and you can be um, more light sensitive. 
the other thing that can happen is that certain types of light might be very um, uncomfortable, such as fluorescent lighting um, and ones that have a flicker frequency to it because, uh, or a buzzing to it, because those can be very distracting and uncomfortable for patients. Uh, double vision. Um, double vision is caused by the two eyes not coordinating together as a team. And it's very disturbing um, because things are not where you think they are. Um, you'll see an image that may be vertical presented, horizontal, or even in a turn position. And it's very confusing. You may have blurred vision. Um, and that's due to uh, the lens that's on the inside of the eye being affected. The, the lens, uh, the brain sends signals to um, the muscles of, uh, that pull and, um, and relax the lens that's on the inside of the eye that changes your focus from near to far. So even if you had perfect visual acuity with no glasses, um, you may experience blurred vision after a concussion because that lens can go into a spasm and it doesn't relax fully or constrict fully to see far and near. It can also fluctuate to where it goes blurry, clear, blurry, clear, and that trying to make it clear um, can give you a headache both in the front part of your eyes, the side or in the back of the um, head. You may have a visual tracking delay, and that is the ability to, um, for the eyes to fixate on a target and be able to um, follow it in all different gazes and be accurate and um, in staying on fixation. When you have um, a visual tracking delay, the object may be going at one speed, but your eyes are not going at the same speed of the object. It may be going too fast or too slow and it, and it skips. And what happens when um, you have a, that visual tracking delay is that your perception of um, where things are moving, um, like a ball coming towards you, uh, you wouldn't be able to judge the distance from that. And things may uh, feel like they're closer than they appear and that can increase anxiety and um, you may cause more tripping and falling in that clumsiness. Um, what many people don't know is that a vision problem can cause postural and movement changes. Um, so our, we have two visual systems. We have our central um, visual system and our peripheral visual system. Our central system is what is responsible for discrimination. It can um, look at something and see what is it. Um, and it can see very small things. Our peripheral vision tells us where our body is in space. Um, it also detects light and movement and it is um, stabilizes us. The peripheral vision does not have good visual acuity. It can't discriminate things um, that are small. It can see big things and big things that are moving, but not small things. Now these two visual systems have to work um, in coordination. Um, otherwise things start to fall apart. Um, our peripheral vision um, may have a light that's moving over here. You don't know what it is. So then you look at it with your central vision and then you tell what it is. So if you have a car that is coming by, you can see there's movement there. And then you look at it and you go, oh, that's a car or that's a child or that's a ball. Um, now, if um, your uh, peripheral vision and your central vision are not working together as a team, which is very common after a concussion, then uh, when you are fixated on something, your posture can change. It, it falls because our body doesn't know where it is in space. Um, and this is where as optometrists, we can make a big difference in um, changing that posture um, for uh, to be more efficient and help these people um, walk without dizziness or disorientation. Now this, um, one of the other things that can happen is that they have uh, visual motion sensitivity. And um, there might be some people that are watching this that they look at this train and it makes them feel nauseous. <laughs> Um, their stomach um, can churn because this motion that's in the periphery vision, peripheral vision is um, disturbing. 
Um, and, and part of that is too with that tracking ability that we don't have the stability of our central vision and our peripheral to work together as a team. And so um, this movement is overwhelming. Now, what's interesting about this uh, video is that you, if, when you're looking at it, if you're imagining that the train is coming from your right and moving to the left um, into the tunnel, it's going that direction. But if you imagine that the train is um, on the uh, starting from the left through the tunnel coming towards your right, you see how the uh, train is now going in a different direction. <laughs> and that shows you how powerful our brain is in suggestion and that um, our, what our brain has developed over um, our lifetime is expectations of what is normal and it does predictions. And a lot of that um, prediction and experience um, goes back to, to starting point again um, after uh, a brain injury. And um, so it can be, you have to learn things all over again, just like having to learn to walk again or eat again or speak again, um, we're having to learn how to see again. And um, I, like, I like this video because it's pretty powerful to see how your brain can change things just by looking at them. Um, the other thing that um, people come in with a, uh, a complaint of is difficulty reading after they've had a concussion. And this is with a lot of students, you know, they um, got an injury, they went back to school, they're trying to um, study and read and they're seeing double, they're seeing blurry, the words are moving around on the page. Um, there looks like the, the words are floating up towards them. And that makes it very difficult to read. Um, it has to concentrate very much on the physical part of reading because these eyes are not focusing and working together as a team and tracking that then the comprehension isn't there. You don't remember what you've been reading. And there can be a perceptual um, visual field constriction. And there's two types, well, there's actually three types of visual field problems. Um, one of them is that the the nerve on the inside of the eye is damaged um, somewhere in the, in the brain and in the pathway. And it can cause a um, visual field loss where um, say a quarter of your vision is just gone um, in, the, in your peripheral vision or a half of your vision. That's called a visual field loss. Um, there is another type of visual field problem um, called uh, visual field neglect or uh, spatial inattention. And that's where you're just not aware of a certain part of your um, periphery, usually on the left side for people who have been hit on the right side of the brain. And the third type, which is the most common with concussion, is a perceptual vi visual field constriction. And that is where even though the nerve might be fine, the optic nerve, um, they, they don't have a field actual field loss when testing for a field loss, but their perception of um, their periphery, they're just not aware of it as much as they are with their central system. And so they may be looking like tunnel vision and not aware of their periphery. And this is why if you've had a concussion before and it wasn't treated um, and you still have this peripheral um, visual constriction, um, why you can hit your head again. You, you hit your head on, the, um, on an open door. Um, you walk into something um, because you're not aware of that periphery and why people can get multiple concussions. Um, and uh, especially if you're in movement. Um, so if you're riding a bike or um, you're running or you're jumping, um, then you're it's even more focal. And so um, that can um, affect, I've had patients with six and seven uh, concussions and they're like, why am I always the one that's getting a concussion? I was like, well, that's, that's um, mm -hmm. because of these peripheral vision problems. And once treated, then their um, susceptibility for getting another concussion is the same for the rest of us. And we talked a little bit about decreased depth perception and that has to do with the two eyes working together as a team. Now the brain um, has different nerves that um, send signals to the eye muscles that are around the eyes. There are six muscles around each eye and um, one, 
the muscle will move the eye in or out, up or down or in a cyclo rotation. Um, so you have the image of the right eye and the image of the left eye, and those images must um, overlap and fuse and make one percept. And when it makes one percept, then it has depth. If the eyes are not coordinating well together as a team, one eye turning out or up or in, um, then it affects your depth perception. And then you're more likely to be clumsy or increase your risk of falls again. And that's why when you, um, because these cranial nerves go through the brain, when you have a head injury, um, it's very common to have these depth perception problems. So why should vision be evaluated after a concussion? And I think they should be every time is <laughs> because 70% of the brain is dedicated to visual processing and 80% of all sensory processing in the entire body is directly affected uh, by information coming in from the eyes. And 90% of traumatic brain injury patients experience those eye movement dysfunctions and eye tuning dysfunctions, 90%, that is just, so much. Um, and 40% of them have these dysfunctions that persist longer than three months. And so some of these, some of my patients that I've seen had a concussion 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and it was never treated. And they still have these vision problems because they weren't identified um, and treated. So the problem with vision <laughs> is that it, uh, when you have a vision problem, it's not obvious to others, and it's not always obvious to the person who has the vision problems. Um, that they, they think that um, they, it's not related to vision. I just have headaches, or I don't like to go grocery shopping because there's just so much movement. Um, I keep bumping into walls and furniture. They get nervous and anxious when they're going down the stairs because their depth perception may be off. Um, they hit their head again and again, getting in the car because of that peripheral vision problem. And they just feel off or insecure because their balance and their posture may be off. And they don't like to go walking in crowded areas and they can feel dizzy. Whereas if you had a speech delay, other people say, you know, you should see a speech therapist. <laughs> or if you have a physical problem, a physical therapist might be a great idea. Um, or some cognitive um, executive function problems that an occupational therapist may be great for you. Um, but they don't think to always refer to a vision, uh, a vision specialist um, because it's not an obvious problem. 